the rhema word that we got last week, uh, and we'll talk about it again here in a few minutes, was halt, H-A-L-T, and it means to be lame due to being hesitant or indecision, and it's used in 1 Kings 18, 21, when Elijah says, choose who you're going to obey, obey God and his commandments or choose Baal in his way. And the reason uh, this whole portion is so good today is because in the next uh, 22 months or so, I believe, the and there's a lot, this could go a lot of different places. Bible's pit is open and Satan and his demonic forces will be released upon the earth. It's called Jacob's Trouble. And, uh, and uh, the, it'll be the full weight of, that deceived Adam and Eve that we'll be faced with. The full weight of evil. So if you're not grounded in the Torah, God's teaching and instruction, you could be tempted to take the mark or to sin or something. And I'm saying that's why it's so important to stay stay, uh, involved with a fellowship. Because within a fellowship, you not only get the Word of God, but... um, uh, you can get revelation in the fellowship. It's really good. Is it okay for judges to judge? Uh, so I went and found this verse, 1 Corinthians 6, 3. Don't you know that we will judge angels? So that if this is true, we shall surely judge every day matters. So if you hire a babysitter, does she do some strange stuff? Uh, you will know a little bit about her. If she's going to be keeping your three-year-old or your four-year-old, you, you, you make a judgment. Uh, it, you know, if, if you hear God or Yeshua or Jesus come out of her mouth at some point, uh, it might convince you to think, well, hey, this girl's probably okay. We make judgments. And he's saying we make judgments on everyday matters, a judge. So we're all to make righteous judgments and that's where it, it's a little hard tough sometimes to make righteous judgments so i'll talk about that more in a few minutes welcome to ysc today is the sabbath it's a special day because the bible says that yeshua the father are here they make their home with us they're here today on the sabbath a symbol it's called a convocation that's where you meet, assemble, you have prayer, you have worship. That's what we're doing today. When we enter into worship and uh, draw close to the Lord, sometimes He'll give us a word. We've all got different walks with the Lord as far as Torah goes. Some of us just started Torah. Some of us been in it a few years. Some of us been in it all our lives, you know, in Torah. But we're still learning. It doesn't matter what how long we've been in it, because we're still still learning God's ways, His teaching and instruction. But here in 1 Kings, God tells Elisha, tell the people, choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose this day. It says, it says, the verse actually says, how long are you going to be paralyzed? That's halt. How long are you going to be paralyzed? That means Lame, due to being hesitant, because you're just you're kind of on the fence about some things. You're weighing some things out, and basically, the way this chapter starts off, Elijah says, "Either you obey God and His Ten Commandments, and I I say especially number four, or you you're obeying some other gospel, some other." Some other teaching. Uh, He calls it um, anything that strays from the pure word of God is called idolatry. Idolatry. So so if you have a different definition for keeping the Sabbath than God does, I'd say that's idolatry. Okay? So you just got to be careful. So is it okay for judges to judge? And this Torah portion is all about appoint judges and we are to uh, judge righteously 
And that's something that's tough to do sometimes. They, they say, don't judge. And then people will use that verse because there may be a log in your eye or a plank in your eye or something. That's not a commandment not to judge. You just got to check yourself to make sure there's no plank in your eye. If you're judging righteously according to Torah, it's okay to judge. And this whole Torah portion today is about judging. It's um, Deuteronomy 16, 18 to 19 on page 1. It says, select judges in every city. They're to make righteous judgments. And uh, last week, um, I had to make kind of a tough call on an issue. And I didn't want to do it, but I had to. So, uh, like I say, we're all at different walks, different place in our Torah. And uh, so I want to thank the people that supported me uh, and the, the decision I had to make last week, okay? I want to thank you for that. So on page one, there are many judges in the world today are like the, it says, are like the judges in Sodom and Gomorrah. They're immoral. They're, they, they're bribed. They're blackmailed. They're influenced. And most of our judges in America today are like that. Or many of them are, okay? Uh, Deuteronomy 16, 18, and 19 says, Set up judges in every city. Uh, and I believe this begins with uh, the pastoral ministry. God told Paul, Appoint judges, which is evangelists, prophets, teachers, pastors. Uh, appoint these people to lead and help your people. And then, then the apostle Paul judges people in 1 Corinthians 5, 6, don't you know he felt alone comfortable judging those people? But these people in Corinth were doing things they shouldn't have been doing. Okay? So he had to judge them. If you don't have righteous judgment, there's chaos. Chaos. So you want um, good Judeo-Christian principles carried out in your in politics, in land, in uh, you don't want somebody coming breaking down your door, or you don't want. We don't want chaos in the land. And I say the United States that I grew up in is gone. Uh, things are, are changing, and uh, and it's because of the decisions that judges have made. So on June 26, 2015, it's called Obergefell versus Hodges. The U.S. Supreme Court made a 5-4 decision, ruled that. The institution of marriage with legal rights is now granted to same-sex couples. I say this was a landmark decision by five unrighteous judges because they weren't obeying what the Bible says about what's proper marriage. I say this decision is a fault and failure of Christianity, pastors and teachers and things like that. The sages teach that world judgment, and I say, uh, and I could give you verse after verse about world judgment coming to America, um, begins when three things happen. Three things, this is, the sages say, it goes back a long time, because nations have fallen in the past. So three things have to happen. When these three things happen, then there's nation judgment, not individual judgment, nation judgment. And if you're in nation judgment, you could die because the nation's being destroyed. You follow me? So, page two. Torah is no longer taught in institutions, the nation's institutions. Few people are, are, are obeying the Torah. So that happened in 1962 when we took prayer out of schools. It used to be uh, you go to school... Uh, you, they read from the Bible maybe at some point during the day. Uh, uh, you know, people love the Lord. And, uh, and you go back a couple hundred years to our founding, the Bible was taught in schools, in every school. And then number two thing that happens for a nation to fall, be destroyed, and I'm talking about the United States, the covenant of marriage between a man and a woman is violated. 
that happened in 2015. And then the third thing that has to happen is the eating of human flesh. It's called cannibalism. And, uh, and in 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court, so I'm just giving you facts that's on the Internet. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that a woman has a right to choose the death of her unborn baby. Of course, that's been reversed to a point. But what I want to tell you is, since they reversed that and gave it back to the states, abortion has actually increased. And why has it increased? They had a workaround once it was reversed. It's called a pill that you can buy and telemedicine. So you don't have, if you live in a state where they outlaw abortion, you can get online through telemedicine with a doctor in another state and get the pill. Okay? So... So our, our, um, is fetal tissue used from aborted babies used in needle injections, some makeups, pharmaceuticals that are cannibalized by our body. So a long time ago in the Old Testament, to, to get something in our bodies that was harmful, you ate it or drank it, right? But, but um, today you can actually have injections that... Um, can, can contaminate you, okay? Uh, could, could it be foreign DNA in those injections? So, and has anybody ever heard of the mo movie Salient Green? Has anybody ever heard of that movie? Charlton Heston stars in it. And it's about cannibalism in the year 2022. So could these, these things that happened in 22, 20, 21, 22, 23, and even today be violating kosher food laws? Wikipedia's own definition of WI-38 is a diploid human cell line composed of fibroblasts derived from lung tissue of a three-month-old gestated dead female fetus. That's the definition on Wikipedia. And it's used in some injections. I don't know. It's probably not even used every injection. But a lot of times you don't get the, um, the handout that comes with the, the thing you're getting, the, the shot you're getting. So I say, has world judgment begun? I say all three of these things are happening today in the United States. And uh, I say it's because we're killing babies that God will judge America. Deuteronomy 1620 says, And justice, justice you shall pursue in order to live in the land. And I say the Sabbath age. If there's no laws like Judeo Christian principles or Torah, there is no justice. But let's say this one world government comes along and they want to do things their way. Well, who's setting the making the laws? It, they may not agree with the Bible, what God said in the Bible, okay? So God says in Deuteronomy 17, you shall not sacrifice any bull as an offering that has a blemish. What does that mean? Today, Paul says that the sacrifice that we give, since we don't sacrifice a bull on an altar somewhere, it slit his throat and all that, that our sacrifice is the bull of our lips. That's what's called a sacrifice of praise. So whatever we say with our lips, if it, if it um, defends God and his laws, his Torah, that's a good sacrifice. But if we don't, don't do that, that's, that's not a good thing. And that's called mixture. Our lips must confess and profess a love of Torah. And I say that's all Ten Commandments. Page 3, Deuteronomy 17, 9 to 11. It says, if a dispute arises between people, go to the Levitic Kohim or judge and do whatever he tells you. So if there's a dispute in the church, then you go to the pastor of the church and say, this happened, this happened, what's going on here? And then he will judge on what's going on the best he can, the way the Lord tells him. So Yahweh has called, appointed, and ordained judges who are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, deacons, and elders to settle disagreements. 
Listen to them. Because it's, uh, it's easy to want to settle, settle it yourself. Figure it out yourself, and you be the judge. Uh, and, uh, but you, you can do that within your own family, but uh, when it's here, it's a little different. Not everyone's going to listen to who Yahweh appoints. All you got to do is listen, listen, read Isaiah, read Jeremiah. It says, no one wants to listen to me. Isaiah said that. Jeremiah said that no one wants to listen to me. And they asked God, How, when will they start listening to me, the prophet? And uh, God says, when all is destroyed. When all is destroyed, some of them might listen to you, okay? During May 18, 10 to 12, stay away from fortune tellers, horoscopes, and people who interpret omens. Verse 13, be perfect. The actual word uh, and in that Bible is blameless. And who's God coming back for? A bride without spot or wrinkle. Blameless. So, I had someone tell me just this past week, last Saturday, no one can be perfect. I said, no one can be perfect. Well, that's a lie from Satan right there. Because right here it says, be perfect. And I've taught on here on how to be perfect. All you do is obey God and what he says. That's how to be perfect. Rabbi Rashi says we are to keep things simple. When one argues with a fellow believer, it reveals their immaturity, foolish nature, and pride. Verse 15. Yahweh gives us prophets like Moses. And as a reference to all the prophets, we are to listen to men that Yahweh appoints for us prophets like Moses. They never stray from Torah. And even Yeshua said, the Torah is still active. I still obey all the Torah. And it won't pass away until the heavens and earth pass away. And uh, that could happen pretty soon. <laughs> that could happen here in about 20 years. Because we're at the end of the 6,000 years. And most pastors... And most churches will tell you, well, Yeshua could come back any time. Well, if he could come back at any time, if what, what's he going to look like? He's coming back as a king on a white horse. And there's going to be blood in the streets. He's going to judge all sin. John 5, 46, 47, Yeshua says, Moses wrote of me, so believe what Moses wrote. He's saying do the Torah right there. Deuteronomy 18, 18, I, Yahweh, shall set up, call, and appoint. A prophet like you, Moses, I will put my words in his mouth. Just read John 14, 10. Verse 19. I will hold one accountable if one does not listen to the prophet, pastor, who speaks the Torah. Deuteronomy 19, verse 10. Innocent blood is not to be shed in your land. So if there's been murder in the United States... Uh, I don't know how many murders there have been. Uh, there's some, been some nations, like in China, Russia, different places, where they have murdered millions of people. And uh, when that happens, the, the blood uh, defiles the land in which you live. So how many innocent lives have been lost in the United States this year? I'm going to get to it here in just a second. Due to abortion. It defiles our land. So... I'm saying, what's going to happen next? A great earthquake or something worse? I don't know. But it defiles the land. It has to stop. Deuteronomy 19, verse 14. Do not alter your neighbor's property boundary. That is your inheritance to your children. Or misrepresent your property boundary in any legal document. And this takes me to the thought that borders must be protected. Because not everyone that crosses our border comes into this country, not through legal means, otherwise comes another way, they may not have the same Judeo-Christian principles that we have. They may not respect your uh, property border on your, where you live. And, you know, if you worked hard for that, and God wants to bless you and able to purchase that, and then someone comes and violates it, they're stealing. They could be stealing from you. That's not good. Private ownership of property is a God-given right. Deuteronomy 19.21. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. 
This is speaking about financial compensation when you hurt a fellow believer. And uh, Yeshua is talking about the exact same thing in Matthew 5. He's quoting Deuteronomy here. He says, Yeshua uses the phrase and says, You've heard it said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Then Yeshua kicks it up. He says, avoid the courtroom. What does that mean? He's saying it is eye for eye. It is tooth for tooth. But if they want to sue you, avoid the courtroom. Go to that person and give him extra. Resolve the problem best you, that you can. You know, page 5, I say Yahweh will send his two witnesses soon. That's June 28, 2026. And I'll talk about the, that more on the last page here in just a few minutes. Deuteronomy 21, 1 to 9. These scriptures are talking about loss of life and the shedding of blood that defiles the land. So, in the United States, who is atoning for the innocent blood of 50 million babies killed since 1973? Who's atoning for that blood? Genesis 4.10 says, Your brother's blood crieth from the ground. So these babies' blood is crying from the ground. Who's atoning for the 1 million plus abortions yearly in the United States? Who's atoning for the 3,000 innocent deaths daily? Who's atoning for the murder of 50 million abortions worldwide? And I'm, I'm saying we're already in Jacob's trouble. Go to page 6. The half to arrive. It's a series of prophecy by Isaiah spoken during Elul. What's today? Elul day five. Today's Elul day five. We proved it back in March. Isaiah 51 11. Yahweh's re this remnant shall sing as they return to Zion. So, so we're talking about the second exodus. Is all of, we are Israel here in the United States. We're grafted in, Romans 11, 19, we're grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. So that makes us an Israelite in a way. Doesn't make us Jewish, okay? But you could say we're Jewish in a way because we do what the Bible says, okay, in a way. But uh, so is God going to save everybody who said a sinner's prayer? No. Some people don't do well about honoring pleasing the Lord as far as his Ten Commandments go. Some people might just go at Christmas and Easter. <laughs> Some people might claim to know God, and they never go. I know a few like that. <laughs> you know, it's okay. But it says, Yahweh shall, Yahweh's people shall sing as they return to Zion. So all the prophets talk about a day when the scattered Israelites all over the world, I'm talking about India, Russia, China, South America, Canada, everywhere they've been scattered, and the ones who have been grafted in, Yeshua says, I've only been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those are Christians all over the world that have been grafted into covenant. And uh, so, is everyone that said a sinner's prayer going to sing as they return to Zion? No. Only the ones doing his Torah. The other ones, he's going to say, depart from me. He, Yeshua says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Commandment number four is the Sabbath. You've got to keep the Sabbath. And so many Christians don't keep the Sabbath properly. I talked to a man yesterday. I was taking my... I talk about the Lord all the time to people. You know, I'm talking to the fellow. And I said, he says, what do you think about this Ukraine war? I said, it's bad. And it's coming here pretty soon, you know, with fallout and everything. And he says, no way. I said, oh, yeah. But I said, you can be protected. He said, yeah, how? I said, keep the Sabbath. He says, oh, I do that. I said, where do you go to church? He says, I'll go to over here at so-and-so. Uh, what day do you on? On Sunday. Well, let me ask you a question. Can you show me a verse in the Bible where Jesus changed the Sabbath to Sunday? He said, no. No, I can't. I said, what day is the Sabbath? The seventh day of the week. It's been that way throughout history. I said, if you want to be protected, you need to keep the Sabbath on Saturday. You need to come to our church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, and he just stared at me, okay? But he's a nice guy, and I, I love him because he's a good, he was, in, he's ex-military, he was in the, in the 
fought in wars and stuff. I really respect the man. I really do. And, I, and that's the only reason I shared that with him. It's because I love him. You know, okay. Anyway. But the ones obeying Torah shall sing as we return to Zion. Verse 16 to 17 of Isaiah 51. You are my people. I say Christianity. But you have been judged by me for disobedience. Awake, awake, O Jerusalem. That's why I played that song. That's face to face. That's the way God spoke to Moses. You're talking to God. You're in your prayer closet or whatever. And then you hear him speak to you audibly, audibly, like we're, that's called face to face. So that's going to happen real soon. When do I think that's going to happen? In two years. Why do I say two years? Because I believe the two witnesses are going to call fire down from heaven, which is they're going to get answered prayer. There will be no rain and stuff like that. And their prayers will be answered. And what will they be teaching, the two witnesses? How to go to Jerusalem. They're going to teach us how we are going to go to Jerusalem. Because all the Bible, all the prophets say, in the last days, the remnant... The kingdom will be restored, re, re, restored, set up, and that's in Jerusalem. And, that, and he'll be, I say that he'll be talking to us face to face at that point. It says, uh, Isaiah 52, you shall not go in haste. And uh, I believe this is because when the two witnesses come to teach us how to obey Torah, to uh, teach us how to go to Zion, and I believe we'll all be there by Shabbat Shiva. I've done lots of teachings on the Shabbat Shiva. It's a Sabbath during the 10 days of all, right before Yom Kippur. And that's called the Sabbath of Return. And I believe that happens in 2029 when we all will go with the two witnesses to Israel and uh, keep that Sabbath in Israel. Okay? And, and I know that's a little deep, but it says, You shall not go in haste. So if they are teaching, for three and a half years, that's a process telling us how to go to Israel. Some, they may say, hey, you can go to Israel, and if they start teaching in 2026, which I think they will, then uh, you might want to go in 2026. You may be ready to go, or it might be 2027 or 2028, or you may go in the spring of 2029. We will all be there by, by Shabbat Shiva in 2029, and that would be in the fall. We'll all be there by then. Okay, I talked about Bible secrets, prophecy secrets too. I talked to Abraham yesterday or the day before. So I texted him, and he answered. And I told him I admired him for being such a Berean and digging into the Word. Uh, because I had read it once before, and I was reading it a second time. He tends to call things a little early, just like I do sometimes. It's going to happen, but sometimes we call it a little early. And that's because we want everybody to be saved. We don't want anybody to, Yeshua to say, depart from me, okay? To him, he's doing a great job. And he responded back to me. As first said, I was just going, this was just going over in my head when you texted me that I need to dig down and dig deep and redo the book. So this is a 20... 22 book I think or 23 book he's updating it so it'll be published later this year he covers the same thing I've been covering for 10 years where I covered it in 52 weeks he covers it in book form it's and it's a great teaching great teaching so Abraham Ojeda now what's wrong with that picture <laughs> is that not sick oh sick blasphemous an abomination What's wrong with the people when they carry a sign like that? No, abortion kills people. It doesn't save people. It kills people. Grapes, I picked them this week. I saw that in the sky the other day. I don't know if it means anything. Like I say, on the back page uh, are the dates, and I say possible dates, when uh, I'll be 81 when I attend Shabbat Shiva in Israel with the two witnesses. The two witnesses die December 9, 2029. And then we'll keep the Passover in Israel on April 18, 19, 2030. I'll be 82. 
down will be 92.